Of all the types in Pokemon, the one I felt like should have always existed was the sound type. Clearly, I'm not the only one to have felt this way, as there are many others who have covered this subject in the past. Despite this, I think I can put my own spin on this subject. So, I'm gonna do it anyway. In that case, let's cover what my version of the sound type would look like. There are two approaches to balancing the sound type. One is to help it make sense thematically, and the other is to help balance it competitively. I'm someone who, while mostly caring about competitive play, also wants to satisfy those who care about the lore of the games. As such, here's the basic type chart I made for it. To understand the bulk of this type chart, we have to relearn some boring science stuff that had me snoring while researching the video. The basic gist of it is that there are these things called gases, liquids, and solids. Sound travels slowly through gases, while it travels quickly through liquids and especially through solids. It's for these reasons that sound is resistant to ground, steel, and water, while sound is weak to electric, fire, and flying. As for other types, ice is neutral, since I didn't want to nerf it any further, grass is neutral because water while wood is a solid, it also can be used to block off sound. Rock is neutral because I didn't want to nerf it further or give things like Golem and Agron yet another four times weakness. Poison is neutral since poison can either be a gas or liquid. And Psychic is neutral because I feel like it's fine as it is right now. In that case, what about the non-scientific reasons to give the sound type certain changes? Well, that's where the bug and fairy types come in. To start with bug, many of them are outright deaf which means that they'd resist sound and hit them super effectively. As for fairy, I have noise pollution go lol written on my notes. So I'll let you decipher that on your own. Yeah, this was mostly just a balancing decision, since the fairy type is busted and deservedly needs a nerf, which sound type would provide. With that out of the way then, what about the Pokemon who are sound type? Before making this video, a concern of mine was that there wouldn't be enough Pokemon to give a sound type to. I was wrong. Very, very wrong. There are 77 Pokemon, including forms, who are sound type. That is way more than I thought it would be, and even eclipses types like ice. So, let me introduce you to them all. Igglybuff, Jigglypuff, and Wigglytuff are known for their sinning. Zubat is a blind bat who needs to use echolocation to move. To be fair though, I can see the argument for the type not making sense for Golbat and Crobat. Lapras is often complimented for its nice singing voice and natural use of many sound moves. Also, to get this out of the way, if a Pokemon has typed something solely because of its environment, then I'm removing that type first, since Pokemon like Rapaloct and Hydreigon have shown that Game Freak does not care if a Pokemon can fly or swim. So that will also apply to Zubat's flying, and in this case, Lapras's ice typing. Anyhow, Hoot Hoot and Noctowl make their presence very clear even if they rarely speak. Blossom is a dancer, Politoed sings a lot, as stated by the Pokedex, and its move pool also makes that very clear. Mistrevis and Miss Megius are inspired by Banshees, who are known for their loud sounds. Lombre and Ludicolo dance, despite this, Lotad quite literally cannot. Palo and Swellow can learn Boom Burst. Wismer, Loudred, and Exploud are the Pokemon who embody the sound type the most. Plusle and Minin are cheerleaders. Whalemur and Whalelord are based on whales, which make very loud noises. Vibrava and Flygon generate sounds to catch prey. So while it sucks to remove their dragon typing, I'm gonna do it anyway. The same thing applies to Swablu and Altaria, who are known for their singing voices. Oh yeah, right, uh, Mega Altaria exists too, uh, I guess. Meanwhile, Chingling and Chimeco are literally bells. Cricketot and Cricketune are like alarms, while Cricketune even uses its arms like a violin. Bronzor and Bronzon are also bells. Chadot is a parrot who can communicate with humans. Roggenrola, Bulldor, and Gigalith move in the directions they hear sound. Woobat and Swoobat use echolocation. Audino is a Pokemon with massive ears who even has audio as a part of its name origin. I think it's a perfect candidate for the pure sound type as a result, with the Mega only adding in some extra spice if you really need it. Timpole, Palpitoad, and Seismitoad are based on speakers and headphones. Maractus is a Maraca playing cactus. Meloetta is a singer, while Metaletta Pirouette is a dancer. Klawitzer is based on a creature who manipulates sound to catch its prey. Noibet and Noivern have massive speakers for ears. Primarina is a singer based on sirens. Pikipek, Trumbeak, and Toucanon know Boom Burst. Oricorio is a dancer. Now I had to find something funny to say for three more mons. Well, uh... Your mom. Jengmoo, Hakamoo, and Komoo block sounds with their scales and even use them for dancing and making noise themselves. Grookey, Thwacky, and Rillaboom are all drummers. 
Toxtricity Highkey is a guitarist, while Toxtricity Lowkey is a bassist. To get around the issue of their dual typing, Highkey will be electric sound type, while Lowkey will be poison sound type. As for the Gigantamax form, I have no idea, so let's just go with electric sound. Obstagoon, meanwhile, is a singer. Corsola has the Parish Body ability, which activates Parish Son when hit. Skeledurge is based on a singing crocodile, while having a guitar-shaped head and Torch Son for a signature move. Venizen and Palafin are some of the few Pokémon to learn Boom Burst. Dedunsparce is also one of the few Pokémon to learn Boom Burst. Screamtail is the ancestor of the singing Jigglypuff. So, here's the final list. Feel free to look at it for as long as you want, because I spent way too much time making it! It's for this reason that you should subscribe. Well, at least that's what Azuril is telling me. The damn thing is holding me at gunpoint. Yeah, I know I couldn't organically add a subplug to this episode, okay? I don't need to do them for every single video. Wait, and now you want me to promote my Patreon? Do you realize how greedy I look doing that? Well, whatever. Let's just get back to our regularly scheduled garbage. For this section, I want to thank Trainer Grimm, who presented a document to me in the Discord server, and allowed me to make it into this video. I made a lot of changes to the document related to balance and Pokémon, but I left Grimm's contributions to moves, items, and abilities untouched. So if you see Trainer Grimm on the server, say thank you for making this video possible. Anyhow, to get to the point, on screen you'll be seeing all the new sound type moves. I'm not explaining them, not out of disrespect, but genuinely because I have nothing to add. I just want you to at least see them. As for existing moves, sound moves are listed in Bulbapedia, but we decided not to make all of them sound type. Those exceptions are Bug Buzz, because it's a Bug type's main stab option, Eerie Spell, since it's the signature move of Galarian Slowking, who is a Psychic type, Grass Whistle, which clearly involves grass more than sound, Metal Sound, which is more steel than sound, and finally, both Sparkling Aria and Torch Song clearly involve their base elements more than sound. Also, here's the list of moves that we made sound type, but can be debated against. Astonish involves sound, and gives sound types another physical option, although it also fits the Ghost type quite a bit. Bit too. Disarming voice was changed into a sound type move, both because it makes more sense and because low level fairy types can still use fairy wind. Mock Punch was a move that Trainer Grimm was insistent on making sound type, but I ultimately decided against, since Grimm had already made a physical priority sound move. Overdrive is clearly more electric than sound, but we made it sound so both Toxtricity forms could get stab off it. Parting Shot can be learned by non-Dark type Pokémon, so I felt like I was in the clear to make it sound type. One last thing to mention too is that all the qualities of sound type moves will be switched over to sound type moves. As such, sound as a quality will be removed from the moves that I didn't give the sound type to. Trainer Grimm gave me a selection of abilities, both old and new, to mess around with. Instead of simply listing them though, I also want to show you the new Pokémon I'd give them to. To do that though, let's explain what the abilities do. To start, I'm just going to quickly jot the old abilities it's associated with. By the way, make sure to pause or read the descriptions of the abilities if you're unaware of them. Those are Dancer, Insomnia, Liquid Voice, Own Tempo, Punk Rock, Soundproof, and Telepathy. As for new abilities, Raised Volume acts as the Overgrow equivalent, Reverberation gives every sound move spread damage, White Noise prevents stat lowering like Clear Body, Recording boosts your special attack when hit by a sound type move while also being immune to sound type moves and attracting them like Lightning Rod, and War Cry lowers the opponent's speed. With that jotted then, let's finally discuss the Pokémon who gained these abilities. I gave Balasum Dancer, I gave Zubat, Golbat, Crobat, and Incursula Insomnia, I gave Plusle, Minen, Shimeko, and Shingling Own Tempo, I gave Mistrevis, Mismegius, and Klawitzer Raised Volume, I gave Wismer, Loudrid, and Exploud Recording, I gave Talo, Swallow, Chimeco, and Chainling Reverberation, I gave Mistrevis, Vibrava, Flygon, and Mismegius Soundproof, I gave Oricorio Telepathy, I gave Vibrava, Flygon, and Cricketot, Cricketoon, and Klawitzer or war cry, and finally I gave Swablu, Altaria, and Oricorio white noise. Now though, I want to explain my thought process around handing out these abilities. My first one is that I wouldn't remove an ability from a Pokemon, which is why few Pokemon were mentioned. My final one though is that I would not break any established ability rules. Those are that the starters can only have two abilities, mythicals can only have one ability, and paradox Pokemon can only have one ability. Also, I broke the levitate rule since they all already broke it with Duskull and Weezing ages ago. 
This one will be quick. Trainer Grimm made four type-based items that every other type has. Keep in mind that this would be six if I bothered to do this for past gens where gens and Z moves exist. Anyhow, those items are Charged Speaker, which is the Silk Scarf equivalent, alongside Sound Memory, Auditory Plate, and Chachilla Berry, which all have the effects of other items similar to them. But I think that's it. So, thank you all for watching. It means a lot. This video is yet another experimental detour of mine, so I hope you enjoyed it. And I also hope it gets views, because last week's video did not perform all that well. Anyway, I'll stop complaining like a goddamn nerd, and thank my tier 3 patrons Reggie Mania and J3 Puffin, alongside my tier 4 patrons Plasma Energized and Bartek Golda. Your support makes my Metapod harder each second. If you want to appear on this list with a Pokemon of your choosing next to your name, then you can do so at as little of a cost as $1 a month. If you're interested in some of the fancier rewards too, like access to scrapped ideas for tier 2 patrons, or early video access for tier 3 patrons, then you can check the description to learn more. With that said, I'll see you all next week with another video.